Previously on MasterChef, competition in the MasterChef kitchen was hotter than ever. Absolutely delicious. All of you should come up here and try this. This is really propelling Lee to MasterChef level. But college student Slim failed to make the grade. Go back to your station. I'm not tasting this crap. And saw her MasterChef hopes trashed. This is ridiculous. The time in MasterChef is done. Some cracked under the pressure of an upscale wedding reception. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my ticket ready for Atlanta. You've now just butchered that thing. That is While David Miller rose to the occasion. Keep it up, absolutely brilliant. You were the hero of that team. But in a pressure test, Tracy paid the ultimate price. Construction worker Jake shocked the judges with a bad dish at the wrong time. What's going on here? Please take your apron. Tonight, the final six become the final four. Ow. As they face the world's three most feared food critics. The garlic is overpowering. I can't really taste the fish. I have some bones in mine. Six amateur cooks remain. The last contestant standing will receive $250,000, a cookbook publishing deal, and above all else, become the first American Master Chef. After six grueling weeks, right. the Master Chef competition has reached its final stages. Good morning. Chef. From all that sea of people that entered the MasterChef kitchen for the first time, it's just us left. It's right there. All I need to do is just grab it. I'm the most confident and powerful chef in this kitchen. I can win this. One, two, three, four, five, six of you currently the best six amateur cooks anywhere in America today. And one of you is going to be crowned the first ever MasterChef. If there's anything I want to warn the rest of the contestants about, it's that I've got some things up my sleeve that you haven't seen yet. To be the very best, you have to beat the very best. This is your final mystery box challenge. In their final mystery box challenge of the season, the contestants have to cook and prepare an amazing dish using only the ingredients inside the box. They must do this in just one hour. Excited? Yes, sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because the cook that creates the most stunning dish with the ingredients under that box will have a huge advantage in the next stage of this competition. Are you ready to lift those boxes? I thought that in the mystery box today, we would have something crazy and kooky. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a big, long, slithery like eel, and I'm going to have to touch it. This is the last mystery box challenge, and I'm hoping, give me some ingredients that I can work with. On the count of three. One. Two. Three. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Today's mystery box ingredients are the most tender, flavorful rack of venison. My mom would say, what is venison? <laughs> I'd have to explain to her that it's deer meat, and then I think she might hang up on me. <laughs> we have blueberries, bacon, red cabbage, quail eggs, fingerling potatoes, striped beets, hazelnuts, Brussels sprouts, and of course, red wine. Guys, when's the last time you were at your local market and saw a rack of venison? <laughs> Never. Or quail eggs. All different types of things you can do with it. Grilling, searing, braising, tartare, all kinds of stuff. Just remember, super easy to overcook. One hour, 10 ingredients, one winner. Starting from now, off we go. Baby bean top. Right now, I'm working on my roasted Brussels sprouts. I am used to cooking deer. I'm a southern girl, and in Mississippi, we eat deer like it's going out of style. 
I'm gonna try a blueberry red wine sauce. I would love to win a mystery box challenge. I haven't yet, so it would be really nice. Not having a lot of experience cooking meat, I think that's gonna be the challenge here for me. I think compared to every other mystery box challenge, uh, this one really speaks to me. It's ingredients from where I'm from. The, the biggest challenge for me is gonna be the perfect balance of cooking time and resting time for the venison. The level of concentration is phenomenal. No one's running around crazy, and they are seriously in the game. They're very focused on just staying in their world. Their cutting board mm -hmm. is like their restaurant. Mm -hmm. We're asking them to create a restaurant quality dish, so there yeah. has to be some components and some complexity. It doesn't have yeah. to be overcomplicated, but no. it has to show technique and thought. All right, David, what are you doing? I think I'm gonna stick with a filet style. Mm -hmm. I like okay. wrapping it in bacon. On the bone or off the bone? It's gonna roast it on the bone. On the or, bone, yeah. It's a red wine base? Red wine base, yes. When are you gonna start cooking the venison? When About five minutes, five minutes in. Okay. Right, Sharon. One, two, three different sauces. How come we've got three sauces on here? This is a soup. It goes with the one way of the venison, and the other venison is gonna go with two different sauces. So there are three sauces. One dish has got two sauces on, one dish has got one as a soup. This is a broth. Yeah. A broth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're not doing it once, you're doing it twice. Not doing one sauce, two sauces, you're doing three sauces. Correct. Is that nuts? Nuts? Yeah, you're being polite. All right, Whitney, what's happening? What are you doing here? Okay. Boiling these? I'm trying to get the flavor off of them so I can try to make it great. So what's the final dish? Pan seared venison uh -huh. with a brown gravy. OK, Lee. Got a blueberry coffee sauce. I'm braising some of the beetroot, as well as the beet leaves and the cabbage. So coffee and blueberry sauce with the gamey venison. Absolutely. Whitney did some nice mixed oven roasted vegetables and got some really nice caramelization and browning on the vegetables and the potatoes in the oven. You wouldn't put a, a, a roux base gravy with a loin of venison. It's the Rolls Royce cut. Absolutely. Right. David Miller. I saw some really good butchering skills from him. Uh, great potential there. The only downside to what he's done is cut the venison chops so big, it's going to take a long time to cook in the center. Guys, 30 minutes to go. Halfway there, guys. How are you cooking the venison? Okay, right now I have, I have it testing. Just wanna... Oh, no. What's the matter? That's way overcooked, yeah. OK. That's going to taste like Gandhi's flip-flop. Where's the red wine sauce? Where is it? Yeah. I haven't started it yet. Sauce should be on reducing down. OK. And so far, we're 34 minutes gone. All we've done is overcooked a piece of venison. Oh, my god, I have 30 minutes to, like, cook my entire dish. I started freaking out. Good sear on that, uh, yeah, on sear, that venison chop. Nice Very nice. So Over. listen to that. Isn't that great? So with the scan pan, you get a nice sear, as well as having the fact that it's non-stick. Yeah. This is a last mystery box. This is so important to me. I really want to win this challenge. Sharon is a talented cook, but to his disadvantage, his overcomplication and too many ideas on one plate could really bite him in the ass. Lee, how many times have I seen him cook with fennel? Every single dish he pops out is like with fennel and mint. My right, guys, 10 minutes to go. Last 10 minutes, yes? With just 10 minutes left, the race is on to create the most compelling dish. The judges will select the top three based on presentation and whose venison they think is cooked to perfection. Venison should be out resting, and more importantly, sauce should be coming together. Start dipping in your sauce and tasting the combination. Just over five minutes to go, guys. Start thinking about putting the venison on the plate. My sauce is done, my venison's cooked, and I tasted it, and I thought, wow, it tastes really good, but I don't know what it's supposed to taste like because I'm cooking this for the first time in my life. 30 seconds to go, guys. Come on, speed up. Come on, Whitney. Shoot out. 20 seconds to go. Come on, David, get it sauced. Get it sauced, get it sauced, get it sauced. Come on. Oh, great. 10. Nine, eight, 
seven, six, five. I'm like, no, I need another minute. Four, three, two, one. And stop, guys. Woo! Oh, my goodness. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And stop, guys. Oh, my goodness. Chris. All right. Woo! Stand back from your stations. I was second guessing, and I thought, wow, it tastes really good, but I don't know what it's supposed to taste like because I'm cooking this for the first time in my life. You all started off with the most amazing venison. Exactly the same ingredients for all six of you. We're only going to be tasting three. The judges' criteria for selecting the top three dishes is based on final presentation and from observing the contestants' techniques during the challenge. First one. She tell. I was so happy for her because she's a really good team player in the team challenges, but she hadn't had her moment yet in the spotlight. And earlier today, she was like, I'm ready. I'm ready to bring it. And it was like, it was awesome to see that come to fruition. It's a pan roasted tenderloin with a red wine and blueberry reduction mm -hmm. over creamed Brussels sprouts. Wow. It looks immaculate. It's like a restaurant dish. Yeah, through and through. And it's done with great finesse more than anything is the fact that there was 35 minutes to go. You hadn't even started the sauce. The venison was still rare. How did you manage that dish in just over 30 minutes? I take a lot of time to think before I act, and um, I need time to process and plan. So you have got over the most difficult hurdle. You've let the venison rest for as long as you cooked it, and it's cooked equally throughout. So you've made that become a dream come true. The texture of the venison is superb. You've got that bite in the Brussels sprouts, but you've managed to combine this acidity with the richness of the game, and it works brilliantly. That tastes as if you've cooked it a thousand times. Amazing. Excellent. If, if I had to make one comment, perhaps a drizzle of the most green, intoxicating raw olive oil to give it a little bit more of that lush Italian bitterness. Italian flavor. Excuse me. Did I say Italian? <laughs> olive oil on top of that? Absolutely. Two drizzles of olive oil just kind of breaking through the sauce would be, a, like, would be like the icing on the proverbial cake. Great job, congratulations, a delicious dish. Thank you. Yes, please, thank you. <laughs> you want to spoil that with olive oil on top of that? Just, that was... because, just because you can't grow olive trees in your country, you don't have to harbor that, that, that bitterness <laughs> towards, towards the Mediterranean climate. <laughs> Great start. Very good. OK, next up. OK. Whitney. Let's go. Come forward. Hearing Whitney's name called, it's not surprising. She's been in the top three on many occasions. She just has this natural ability and not surprised at all. Describe the dish for me, please. OK, I have a pan-seared venison. And then I made a gravy from roasting the bones and um, the meat. And then I have roasted Brussels sprouts and uh, fingerling potatoes. My one concern is the, the gravy. I give you the most amazing cut of venison, and you go and stick a gravy on it. Yet red wine was there, and it's almost like the venison's got the wrong coat on. How many times have you cooked venison? My dad hunts, so it's usually at least once every year during the fall.
venison is cooked beautifully. I mean, it's cooked by an angel. The vegetable's delicious. It works, and it works better than it looks. And you have managed to confirm to all three of us is that you understand how to cook venison, which is quite rare at 22 years of age. Well done. Thank you. Right, the third and final dish to be tasted. Shiro. Not being selected for the top three is, is a little frustrating. I felt like my dish was right on. You know, Sharon had so much going on on his plate, and I felt like I did a better job that I really deserve to be in the top three today. OK. I decided to go with the seared venison. We've got a tartar and uh, a couple different sauces to accompany it. Can we just talk about the obvious for a second here? <laughs> the plating is a disgrace. You're lucky you're even up here. It's like Salvatore Dali on crack. Tell us what it is. The venison got shot in the woods on the plate and moved to what? The reason why you're up here is because that venison is cooked perfectly. And it's cooked on the bone. It's the vomit to the side of the plate I, I'm, I'm struggling to understand. OK. Has someone dropped their eyeball on the plate? What is that thing? Quail leg. You got a quail leg eyeball running through the centre. If you can follow me through, it is. Yeah, no, I'm not. No, I'm not going to follow you. Are you crazy? No. I'm going to go there, on top of there, and I'm going to eat my venison that way. It's oozing pink, gamey deliciousness. Venison delicious. Beetroot's nice, acidic, wonderful, delicious. Slow down. You're too complex. I'd love to strip one third of the of you off, and I think underneath those layers, there's a, there's a talent. Fine. As for the eyeball, what a nutter. I really, I try to make it look like I was a walk through the woods. You it know? looks I, like a walk through a crime scene. I mean, it literally, it does. This is cooked perfectly. You just need to get out of your own way. Less is more, less is more. So I guess the question is, why is this dish up here? I'll tell you why. Because we were so impressed by the quality of the cookery on the chop. Great butchering, great sear, perfect cooking. It was head and shoulders above the field. So I've been really looking forward to tasting this because it looked so incredible. And it is. Thank you. OK, Chitelle, Whitney, Sharon, well done. The winner of the last Mystery Box Challenge. Congratulations goes to... It's time for the judges to decide the winner of the final Mystery Box Challenge. Whitney, Chitelle, Sharon, well done. Will they choose Whitney's venison with southern gravy? Chital's roasted venison, or Sharon's pan-seared venison with blueberry puree. The winner of the last mystery box challenge. Congratulations goes to Chital. Well done. Oh. It feels really good to finally be the winner of a mystery box challenge and to win on something that I've never cooked before, which really means that I'm making my decisions in the kitchen based on instinct. I'm a little surprised uh, that Sheetal made it in the, in the, in the uh, not only the top three, but the number one dish of the day. But she seems very one-dimensional. Chitel, your first individual victory. You're back in the game. You have a major advantage in the next stage of MasterChef. Ready? Yes. Well done. This way. Chital now gets to choose the main ingredient for the invention test. Whatever she selects, everybody else must cook with. Whoever makes the worst dish will be eliminated from MasterChef. As always, the theme of this challenge is in the hands of the judges. Today's theme is dessert. Okay. 
Big dessert lover? No. What? No. Well, time to start thinking sweet thoughts. I, yeah. yeah. You're faced with a huge advantage right now, because on what you select, everybody else cooks with. Yeah? Three amazing ingredients. Ready to see what's under the first cloth? Yes. Honey. Beautiful. From lavender honey, honeycomb, raw honey. Let's see what's under number two. You have a plethora of different berries. Mm. Things from the ordinary, like mm -hmm. strawberries, blueberries, to things otherworldly that a lot of people never get a chance to cook with. Mm -hmm. Cape gooseberries, huckleberries, Inca berries. Absolutely unique. Beautiful. Does that light your I'm fire? I'm starting to get a little inspired. Good. Lots of ideas started coming to my mind, including like a pie or like a tort or something. You know, I like to see what all my options are before I choose. From the exotic tropics of Tahiti and Madagascar, we have vanilla. In all its forms, we have vanilla beans, vanilla powder, vanilla extract, vanilla tea even. Vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. You've got to really think about this choice. And who's your strongest competition? Who's the one that you're most feared of out there? Whitney. Whitney. Mm -hmm. She knows dessert. Six of you left. Who's the weakest? David Miller. Think carefully. Which ingredient are you going to choose? I have to choose right this second. Uh, right this second. I'm drawn to the colors on the table, but I might be shooting myself in the foot, but I am, I'm going to go with. David Miller, what do you think under here? I'd love another shot at the venison. <laughs> Today's theme is dessert. I love dessert. I have the hugest sweet tooth. And so, I mean, I was, I think I was the only one today that was excited that it was dessert. Ready to see what Chattel has picked for you all? The options were the most amazing vanilla, the most amazing array of berries, and then the most amazing honey. Chitelle's choice is vanilla. Oh my god, what goes with vanilla? What goes with vanilla? An Asian family, you know, we ate fruit. That was dessert, you know? The rest of you will have half the time Chattel had. Two and a half minutes, and your time starts now. Off you go. With an elimination at the end of this challenge, the dessert theme has distressed even some of the most confident contestants. I really didn't have a clear idea of what I'm going to make, but, uh, you know, vanilla it is, so here we go. I'm getting, like, double of everything because I'm thinking, if I don't have enough time, I'll make it again. Flour, vanilla, sugar. I grab some brandy. I go to the fridge, I grab some cream. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm just pulling as much as I possibly can because at this point, I'm not really certain how I'm going to do this. Right, 90 minutes to make the most amazing, stunning dessert. And on the back of those desserts, you know one of you will be leaving MasterChef. 90 minutes. Starting from now, off we go. So I'm going to make a uh, vanilla creme brulee. I don't do dessert. I don't eat dessert. Don't like dessert. So you know, there's a lot that could go wrong. I'm making vanilla sponge cake, layered with a vanilla custard. I've never made this before. I am making a butterscotch Napoleon with three different delicious nuts. Um, 90 minutes, there's no excuse. Something absolutely stunning. Well, certainly we're seeing the most significant challenge, I think, so far, because here comes together the technical science aspect of baking, the creative aesthetics of decoration and impact. Yeah. Whitney's definitely the baker in the bunch. I think mean, Sharon has a propensity yeah. for overthinking yeah. things as opposed to focusing on one delicious component. Right. And I really think Sheetal's going to come through and yeah. make something that's going to be delicate yeah. and absolutely. beautiful. Today, with only six left, this should be immaculate. Mm -hmm. Right, Whitney, what are they? They are profiteroles. Yeah. 
So shoe pastry is a very difficult pastry to get right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're putting a little bit of water on your finger to dab down the point so it stops yeah. from burning, yeah? And what you put inside the perfume? A chantilly vanilla cream. Okay. I can smell the confidence from here. Lee, what do you, we got going on? I have um, milk and cream infused with uh, walnut and vanilla. That's gonna go together with my walnut French toast as well as a plum coulis and a nectarine carpaccio. I, you're gonna wanna make sure you get yeah. as much moisture because I mean, you're really at the end of the day using old bread to try to keep you alive in the final five. Definitely. All right, David. How are you feeling? I'm sticking with the classic. I'm doing the vanilla creme brulee. Vanilla creme brulee. There's two ways of doing a yes. creme brulee, isn't there? You could do it over a bain marie mm -hmm. and cook the eggs out like a sabillon and then set them into the mold, which is a lot quicker. Uh -huh. Or you can go the dangerous route which and is... put them in the oven. Which I... way have you gone? In the oven. Mike, how are we doing? Uh, this is just a, a basic, like, sort of like the, my custard pudding that I'm going to be uh, using uh, for the trifle. Where's the vanilla at? Vanilla is actually in the scalded in the milk. So you're going to be putting a layer. I'll put. I'll be putting layers. Yeah. I and then like you're going to be putting the sponge cake, the sponge right cake followed by the followed pear. By the pear. Then the, the custard. Oh, man, I got. I think I might have bitten off a little bit more than I could chew. In this elimination, one goes. Mm -hmm. So what is your strategy here? To be stay off the bottom. So do you go safe? Or do you reach for the stars and try to, to try to win it at this point? You have to because you're going to start intimidating yeah. the other ones that are still yeah. here. All right, guys, listen up. 30 minutes left. One third of the time that was given to you, you had 90 minutes to make a stunning dessert. There should be no excuses and no reason that you're not able to produce. <laughs> wow. Cooking is a very calming thing for me. It's what I do at home to like relax as I sit down and I make something. If you're not calm, then your nerves are gonna affect your cooking. If you let that happen, then uh, you know, you're just gonna screw yourself. Mike, your station's over here. Mike's all over the place. He's always all over the place. You see him, he's, he's jumping back and forth, and he's like shaking and running back and forth. I'm out. Oh my god. Just over 10 minutes to go, guys. Oh my god. Oh no. 10 minutes to time, I realized I'm not going to have the meat of my dessert. It's just. It's not there. It's completely wrong inside. That's when it just started oozing. I started panicking, really panicking. Just over 10 minutes to go, guys. Oh, no. It's completely wrong inside. With just 10 minutes left, Chital's dessert looks to be a disaster. She must plate something that can save her from elimination. What I had were four garnishes. There was nothing of substance that could be called a proper dessert in any of those components. The big part of my dessert was the sponge cake. Two minutes to go, guys. You got to put something on the plate, you know? Figure it out. Oh, my. I'm realizing, oh, my god. This beautiful vision I had for a trifle is not going to be nearly what it should be. One minute to go. Start putting those finishing touches on those plates and make those plates beautiful. This looks disgusting. 20 seconds to go. My custard was perfect. It really was spot on, so I didn't want to ruin that by over torturing the top. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, and stop! Woo! Well done. The judges will taste all six desserts. The winner takes an advantage into the next stage of the competition. The person with the worst dish will be going home. Okay, Sharon, let's go. After overcomplicating his last dish, has Sharon played it safe with his dessert? Wow, it's pretty. It's a uh, milfoyer. What's in there? Each layer consists 
of a different layer of nuts. On top is a uh, zabayon with uh, marsala and vanilla. That's not only delicious for what it is, but I think you've achieved in kind of capturing the essence of what a zabalone is on the plate. The lightness, the airiness, the flavor, a real triumph. This is unbelievable. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, listen to that. I love that the crunch. You know, it's one of the senses that even professional chefs in a restaurant forget to think about. That is delicious. Oh, thank you, Chef. Really good job. You can hear it. It is absolutely on the money. Oh, wow. They loved it. They absolutely loved it. They thought it was bam, straight on, bam, delicious. And now I'm not in a position where I go home. What a great start. Yeah. Absolutely amazing start. You could lift that dish now and stick that in any restaurant in this country. Right, David. I looked at his creme brulee and I was like, that's not even a creme brulee. Like, Dave, I'm sorry, but you're missing something here. What is that, please? We have a vanilla creme brulee with a vanilla orange mango cootie. Do you know what brulee means? Because that looks like it a lemon tart from burn. here. Yes. To burn, that's right, lightly burn. Can you just give him your glasses for two seconds? Where's it brulee? The idea, put them on and just tell me if you can see that brulee. Help me to understand. Uh, I, I, I see a few, I see a few pieces, but it will, it will crack. I think will crack before that brulee cracks. You've cooked a creme brulee the hard way in the oven, yes, sir. in a water bath, and you had very little time to do that and cool it down. You've managed it. The coolie, you've got the bitterness from the orange, yeah, the sweetness from the mango, but it works. I mean, it really does work. But it's missing the brulee. Whitney, let's go. While Whitney has excelled in mystery box challenges, she has yet to win an invention test. What is it? A profiterole with a Chantilly vanilla cream and Blombe caramelized bananas. Trust me, having lived in France for three years, I have eaten thousands of profiteroles. This had better be good. The five individuals behind you going into this test today were nervous. If they were tasting that right now, they'd be even more nervous. Good job. So, you flame these in rum? Actually, it was bourbon. Keeping it southern, huh? <laughs> Actually, the first time I decided to um, flambe bananas, I was so nervous to go into the liquor store because that was the first time I've ever bought liqueur. So I went in there and I was like, I'm just buying this for bananas. <laughs> That is, that is kind of sad to me, actually. <laughs> Super light, very sexy, ah, very delicious. Good job. It really just made me feel good that overall the judges love my dish, and I really want to show now that, you know, I can win this challenge. Three down, three to go. One of you will be going home. I looked at my dish and it looked like baby food. One layer of mush, and then a second layer of mush, and then whipped cream. Next up. Chatel. Even if my custard tastes divine, the best custard in the world, I know that the challenge was not about putting custard on a plate given 90 minutes. The real question, where is your dessert? Because that's not it after 90 minutes. Let's get that right. That's, that's half That's the it. best that I could do given that my sponge cake didn't cook. So what's in the bowl? It's a vanilla custard with uh, vanilla and pear and a vanilla whipped cream. I was really riding on your energy today. I love your idea. I was expecting a lot, so it's a, a personal disappointment to have to taste a half-completed dessert from you. Yeah. 
I think you could be in real trouble here. Cheadle had the advantage today. She had full time in the pantry, got to choose her ingredient. There is no reason that she should be failing here. You know, she really dropped the ball on this one. Lee, let's go. The whole dish came together beautifully and, and really tasted good. And I was stoked. I was really excited about it. OK, so we have bourbon pain perdu, which is basically a you know, French toast, over a nectarine and mint uh, carpaccio with a walnut and vanilla sauce. Obviously, fried bread is not what we thought when we talked about desserts and stunning restaurant desserts. This is simply bad. Bad as a dessert, it's, it's even bad as breakfast. OK, Mike, let's go. Walking up to the judge's table, I'm a bit nervous. There's a lot on the line right now for me. I'm just praying the judges might have a little bit of mercy on me today. It's a pear poached uh, trifle with a uh, sponge cake underneath. It's been drizzled with vanilla scented brandy. What is that froth? It's uh, basically the, the egg whites um, that were sort of, I folded it in because I didn't have any other thing to, to kind of, to. Uh... Egg whites. What are they? It's uh, just a pie crust sort of dusted with a little cinnamon and sugar. Pie crust, so like a short pastry. It's short, short of flavor. Does this have raw eggs in it? Does it have raw eggs in it? <sighs> uh, there's a sort of... Yes or no? A meringue, I mean, you know, the egg whites. It's easy question, is there raw eggs in it or not? have raw eggs in it? Does it have raw eggs in it? Uh, there's a sort of... Yes or no? A meringue, I mean, you know, the egg whites. It's easy the question. Is there raw eggs in it or not? Yes. Disappointed, Mike. Go back to your station. After tasting all six dishes, the judges must decide which desserts rose to the occasion and which fell short. The cook with the worst dish will be leaving MasterChef. OK, David, Sharon, Whitney, three stunning dishes. Sadly, there can only be one winner. And the winner has a huge advantage in the next stage of MasterChef. Sharon looks like he is probably the biggest competitor, but I'm not worried. I know I can win this. I thought my dish was spectacular. I'm going in this feeling like I can own this. I can do this. Congratulations. Whitney. <laughs> well done. To have made it this far means so much because I've made a huge sacrifice and I love school. And it's all been worth it to be here. The youngest and quite frankly, now the strongest in the competition. Well done. The judges from the very beginning saw only my age, and they didn't see the rest of the potential that's in me. But now I'm really thinking that they're seeing that. And they're going to see me to the end, and they're going to give me that title. The field split. It's split in two. Three stunning dishes and three dreadful dishes. Front row. You're all safe. Back three rows. Get up here, please. There's three really bad dishes out there. It could be anybody. I have no idea who to gauge. Sheetal's dish completely came apart. Mike, raw eggs, I don't know. That's a big no-no. And Lee's dessert, I don't even know what it was. Lee, we expected more. And we expected you to excel. Chatel, you had a huge advantage, and you fell short. Mike, apart from panicking for 90 minutes, you produced a trifle that looked like toxic scum on a stagnant pool. 
The person leaving MasterChef. Lee. Get back to your station. Thank you, Lord, for salmonella and Mike serving raw egg on the plate. And Cheeto's dish was so unfocused and so simplistic in her way, like she always is, because that's my savior right there. The person leaving, Master Chef. Mike. You cannot serve raw egg whites on top of a badly made trifle. You've come a long way in a short period of time, but you have got to slow down. And when you do, you'll surprise yourself about the results. Please take your apron off. I really wanted this. I really, really wanted it. Please take your apron off. Thank you. This is not the end. Mas being on Master Chef has just fueled this burning desire that I have about food and, and cookery. And you know, I'm gonna take this whole experience and all the, the mistakes I made, and I'm gonna just take those as sort of a, a sign of refinement, you know, and I'm gonna just take them and become better. Next time on Master Chef, the final five: David, Whitney, Sharon, Chital, and Lee are about to cook for the three most intimidating food critics on the planet. We got a lot riding on this too, guys. Don't embarrass us. Damn it. It's not right. I can't really taste the fish. Notice I didn't eat mine. But first, they have to catch their ingredients. Ah! The two who create the lowest scoring dishes will face the dreaded pressure test, where one more contestant's dream of becoming America's first master chef will come to a bitter end.